Good morning, welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God. We're so glad you joined us. God is really doing something incredible around the world and we've watched his work, his handiwork in all sorts of places. We have missionaries around the world that are serving us right now, but we also have watched that God's spirit is flowing through every part of this earth. There's just some unreached people, some people that haven't learned the gospel or realized the gospel yet. And we're praying that God will reach those parts also. But I'm also praying that God will reach into your home today, into your life today, or at a place of work, or in your car, wherever you're at, that God will touch you and minister to you today. And I know that God's got a plan for your life, and I know that God has something just special for you. A few minutes we'll be going to worship, and, and part of worship uh, will be just glorifying the Lord, praying for people, but also after that we'll be getting into the Word of God. The Word of God is the thing that separates and helps and guides and, and literally moves the mountains inside of our lives. And I'm thankful for the Word of God. But I'm praying for you today that God will just minister to you. Part of worship is also our giving unto the Lord, and you can give online or you can give uh, through the mail or even just just drop it by the church. That's part of our first fruits unto God, our first gifts unto Him, our giving unto the Lord, that which He's asked us to do. We're just part of what He's required or asked us. And we just want to follow through with that. But I just also want to pray for the finances of some people today that are watching, that are struggling with some things. So Lord Jesus, right now, the person at home that feels all alone, the people, person struggling with their finances or more, maybe it's more like people. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will minister and help them and guide them and supply the need that, Lord, seems an impossibility. It may be a physical need, it may be a spiritual need, it may be a financial need. Maybe a family thing that's happened that they can't just get out of it, they can't move past it. Lord, we ask for healing to come in that situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, minister to them now. As we move into the service, minister to them now. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. The 
Oh, we 
There's money in the rock. There's money in the rock. There's money in the rock. Hmm. Yes, Lord. And know oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is.
where we can just reach out and it's tangible and we can touch it, Lord. Lord, for the ones that aren't here today, that are home, maybe in bed suffering, maybe don't want to come and celebrate Father's Day for whatever reason, Lord God, or maybe they're just not able to get out. I pray that your presence would permeate the rooms where they are, that you would, you would just invade their thoughts, you would invade the atmosphere and change it by your power right now. Heal that one that is on that sick bed. Lord, for the one that is fighting for their life, Lord God, I pray that you would reach down and touch them. Empty fluid out of lungs, Lord God. Shrivel up cancer cells. Lord, raise them up as a testimony and a miracle that God still does miracles, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, for somebody who might have just lost a dad, comfort them, I pray, right now. In that overwhelming sense of loss, may your love just flood over them and bring peace to let them know that earthly dad might be gone. Oh, but heavenly dad's on duty. Thank you, Lord, for all of this. And thank you for who you are. The best father the creator of the world, and that you love us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who could confide It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Israel, you slipped in, slipped in before. It's usually in the back there you slipped in, but you came down front, so come on down front. Would you do that with me? <laughs> Amen. I just want you to give a great word of greeting this morning. It's so good to have you. Would you welcome me to back this morning? Thank you, Pastor Wes, Pastor Beck, Becky. Well, it's, wow, it's, it's a beautiful thing to come back home. Amen. This has been, this was our church for many, many years. And, um, you know, many of our children were saved here and our grandchildren were presented to the Lord. And so it's always an uplifting experience to come and, 
and see the pews filled with people, loving people, people that love God. And so my prayer for you is to continue to be excited about the Lord, be excited about no matter where you are, no matter where you go, present the gospel every way you go and to everyone you meet. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you so much for having us and you know, we're very happy to hear Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all. Bye. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read from Malachi 3. Well, let me see what my glasses are doing here. <laughs> Verse 10. Oof. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do this, says the Lord of Heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it all in. Try me, or try it. Put me to the test says the Lord God Almighty. Father, we just thank you for today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all the fathers that are here today. We pray blessings over them, over their family, and over that journey called fatherhood, Father God. Father, we just pray for the tithes and offering, and we pray that you will bless it, Father God, that it will go forth to do what you have created it to do, what you have provided it to do, and that's to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. Well, I'll do the, we have missions today. So anybody bring your barrels today? I forgot ours. Anybody got your barrels? Come on. Last time uh, when I took it in, we gave $52.19 for BGMC. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And you know, if you forget, you can bring it in next week. I'll have to bring my ours in next week. Awesome. Amen. You know, when I take that bucket to the bank and I dump it in that coin machine, I was really kind of got a little annoyed with the teller because she said, oh, that's all? I'm like, excuse me? She goes, well, with that big bucket, I thought there would be a lot more. I said, well, there will be because I'll be coming back. You know? I mean, come on, right? Well, the Lord is going to fill that bucket. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you not only for the BGMC that comes in, but Lord, the other missionary money that you make provision for. Lord God, that the missionaries that we send around the world, Lord, that you are using them to bring about plans and purposes for your kingdom, that souls and harvests are being reaped, that the message is getting out to uh, the people in their own language. Lord God, I thank you that you will strengthen every missionary, the one that is hurting, the one that is uh, feels so alone, the one that, that needs healing in their body, that you would do that work in Jesus' name as they are there and they might feel they're so alone on the field. Lord, you are with them. Just remind them of that. Lord God, and I thank you that we we will hear of the miracles. We'll hear of what you're doing around the world through these monies and the provision and the prayer. And Lord, I thank you that you would bless every child and every adult that has contributed to the BGMC because Lord, we are reaching children around the world. And Lord, that will be the ones, I really feel Lord God, they'll be the ones that will usher in your coming. So, Lord, we need so many more children to hear about you and know that you love them no matter what's going on in their life and in their home or their situation or even their country. There is a God who loves them and sees and is going to bring judgment on those who are destroying the lives of children. No matter how they're choosing to destroy it, God, you will bring judgment. Remind the children that you are their protector. You are their provider. You are the one who loves them and you are their advocate and you are their avenger and you will avenge them. And I thank you, Lord, that there will be a harvest reaped for your kingdom, a revival stirred up in the hearts of children around the world and even here in the United States to usher in your coming. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna share with you today about time for refreshing. Uh, I shared this on our Encouraging Thursday, which we send out uh, through our uh, 
uh, phone uh, robo service. Somebody's called it one time. It's actually a phone tree. It's what it's called. And we shared it out with uh, several people, but I just want to share part of that with my message here today, if I could. In Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verse 25 says, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. I know it's a hot time and we're dealing with a lot of heat right now all over the place. And yet, at the same time, we're, we're trying to act normal. In our normalcy, we oftentimes face some things that we didn't plan on. Earlier this week, I walked out of my office to meet a contractor outside. And I came upon a man walking his dog through the church parking lot. Not unusual. We have many that walk through here. And he quickly walked over to the water spigot on the outside of the church. And then he turned and saw me and said, Please, sir, can I have some water for my dog? Before I could even answer, he turned on the, the spigot and, and pulled a plastic bag out of his pocket and filled it with water for the dog. He says, dog's very thirsty. Of course, I said yes and offered him even more, but he said this was fine. Oftentimes, we find times where we're just needing some refreshment, refreshment. Sometimes it's, it's to the Christian, sometimes it's to the non-Christian. But Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, verses 1 through 12, talks about this vision that Ezekiel had, this vision that goes on there. And in his vision, uh, Ezekiel has talked about building the temple, uh, chapters 40 through 46. It talks about a temple that's bigger than Solomon's temple, yet we never see the, the, the end result of this temple. So it's literally a prophetic word that moves in a different direction than most people think it should. Some people think it should be something we should be able to see very easily. But rather, I believe it's more of a, on the spiritual level, the spiritual level that deals with you and me. And beginning with verse uh, 1 and 2, it says, In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing from the east beneath the floor, door of the temple, passing to the right of the altar on its, on its south side. The man brought me, out, brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the side of the east gateway. In other words, the, the, this water is literally flowing over the threshold. I don't know about you, but there's some times where I've gone into a situation, I saw water flowing out of a door. Well, instantly we begin to think that water's flowing out, there's a problem there, something's wrong, and, and that's instantly what our minds go to. But that's not quite what it's talking about here, but it's something very significant because obviously the, the vision is, is giving way to something that, that we need to look at and Ezekiel was trying to uh, help us understand it as he began to see this vision of somebody that is showing it to him. Water flows, we, we oftentimes think of problems. Water is one of those things that we, we think of, it could be destruction, it could be other things. Yet water oftentimes is one of those things that is for the good of mankind. It could be the good of us. Uh, this particular situation, it is not for destruction, but rather for something good. Uh, flowing greater than they had ever seen. The depth was significant here as, as he begins to talk about this depth of water. In verses 3 through 6, the water gets deeper. It starts off with ankle deep. I don't know if you walk through ankle deep water, but as it flows out, it, it's, you can walk through that pretty easy. Then it gets knee deep, and as it gets knee deep, it's a little harder to walk through. And then it gets waist deep, and that's, that's when it becomes even more and more difficult. Verse 3 says this, Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,050 feet and, and led me across again. This time the water was up to my knees. Then another 1,050 feet, and it was up to my waist. And then he measured another 1,050 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. There's the significance in that part is that is you can't just manipulate on your own. It is something that literally steers where you're going, and the water you're dependent upon as it flows, you're dependent upon it, for it to guide and direct your pathway at that point in time. 
If the depth wasn't important, then he could have stayed at the threshold. But literally, he took him out into this deeper part and kept taking him out more and more. Too deep to walk through. When the water is deep, you lose control. In fact, you literally have to just, you know, float in the water. I've had many a person learn how to float at times, and I've watched people fail floating <laughs> and, and, and learn that they can't float the way they think they ought to be able to float. And it's one of those interesting things watching a new swimmer learning how to float. It's easier if you learn as a kid. I've watched some adults try to learn that later on, and it's very difficult, very difficult for them to learn how to float. Floating is one of those things that you're dependent upon the water to do the work for you. You don't have any control with your legs as far as walking in the bottom, standing up, and I've got all this control. You lose control at that point in time. God's river that overflows so much in our lives that we let go of the flesh and we allow God's spirit to work through us. It is this, this part of, of literally uh, significant in our lives that we let go of the flesh parts and, and we allow God to begin to steer us. God begin to guide us. It's over a mile away from the threshold at this point in time, but the effectiveness of this thing is even getting greater and greater and greater. And as this effectiveness is getting greater, it's, it's literally guiding those things going downstream and, and affecting those things going downstream. This is a water that literally begins to flush and cleanse, flush and cleanse. Even the salt water that would cause things to die is affected by this. He asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the riverbank, and when I returned, I was surprised by the sight of the many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, the river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of the stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. And there will be swarms of living things whenever the water of this river flows. Uh, just pause there for a moment. Some, many of you have, have talked about the Dead Sea, have gone there or heard about it. It is so salty that literally you, you don't have to uh, try to float in it because the salt water holds you up. But this particular water that's coming out of here is changing the, the particulars of that stream of the dead, stream, uh, dead Sea. It's changing the water of the Dead Sea and is bringing refreshing there. So no longer are you being able to be held up by the salt water because the salt water is no longer there. It's changing the water thereof. There'll be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea and its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever the water flows. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea and all, all the way from Egadon to Eglan. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish on every kind of every kind will fill the Dead Sea, just as the water that gives life. The Dead Sea you can float in, but you can't really do anything else with it. It doesn't help one bit. It doesn't give life to anything. Water that changed that Dead Sea around. It began to change. And life began to, uh, began to flourish because of this new water coming in. This new freshness coming in. Uh, fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea. And the flushing of other waters cleanses things. And God wants to cleanse things out of our lives as he begins to pour his freshness of his spirit into us. This water the, uh, that he gives us, this, this time of refreshing, this, this life that he begins to begin to pour into us. He begins to pour it in. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. He begins to pour this freshness into our lives. And as he begins to pour the freshness into our lives, he wants to change the, the particulars of our lives. Water that brings healing. Removes the fear and the anxiety. Water that refreshes. It cleanses out the fear. Water that renews and removes, removes the bitterness and the resentment in my life and other things. Or maybe even the past hurts and the past situations takes those things out of my life. Jeremiah 31, 25 says this, For I will satisfy the weary soul and, and even languishing soul I will replenish. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. There's something about this replenishing that begins to bring life back in. There was a situation that took place in Genesis 
uh, 18, Isaac is, is there and, and the Philistines, there's, there's, a, there's a problem going on there. And, and it's literally the Philistines had, had, had literally stopped the wells of Abraham and, and literally shut things down. And, and in doing so, they're trying to stop the crops from growing and all those kind of things. And so the, the first thing you do in a situation like that is, is you want to be able to get water again so the crops will begin to grow. Because you get crops growing, then your troops and your people can begin to get nourished and, and have life again and all these things. But yet it wasn't happening there in, in Genesis, the 26th chapter, verse 18. The scripture says in verse 8 there, Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Now, I know that we're talking about, uh, in life here, we, we oftentimes talk about, you know, our, our heritage and what we've come from, and there's some, uh, some people throw out their entire background. But there may be some things in there that God planted there or God purposed there to be able to give you life later on. Because in this situation, there's life that comes because of something that Abraham had done. There may be some things that your dad or your mom or maybe somebody else in your life had done and, and you kind of threw it out because they, they, you, they turned you off with something else. You, so you threw out the entire picture of what was going on. You threw out the entire situation. You said, well, you know, I just need to be, be healed of all the memories of that person. Just throw everything out of there. Well, maybe just, maybe. God allowed you to go through some things because there's some things in there that you need to glean from. There's some things in there that maybe you need to have part of your life. And, and maybe there's some wells there. You need to cleanse out some of that dirt and get that, the junk and the mire out of there and say, okay, now I want that fresh living water so I can give life over here again. There's some things that you need that refreshing because God says, even though your legacy might have been bad or your promises were, were unkept and maybe there's some other things, but maybe there are some things there that God wants to use in that situation and begin to pour it afresh and anew in your life. I don't know what your situation is, and I don't understand all the things that oftentimes we go through. But I do know this. Isaac could have blamed the enemy for destroying the wells, or he could have blamed uh, Abraham for not building the wells properly or something else. And, and we might go through all those things, but instead he dug them out again. Instead of looking to blame something, he just dug the wells out again. And Isaac uh, could not have survived unless he had revived those wells. He could not have survived because he had to rely on those wells. And those wells were critical in giving him life and giving the troops life and giving the people life so that they could move on. Well, let's go back to Ezekiel again, if we could. The refreshing has to come. The refreshing of the water has to come. Verse 9 says of Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Swarms, not just a, a particle, maybe just one little fish over here, but swarms of living things will begin to come out. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea all the way from one place to the other place. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea and they will, they will fill the Mediterranean. Everything begins to live and, and life begins to come back in there, it says in Scripture. Everything lives and affects other things and large fish and all sorts of stuff begins to come out. I love Isaiah, the 44th chapter, verse 3 says, I will pour water upon the thirsty one and streams upon the desert. And I will pour my spirit upon this, thy seed and my, my blessing upon thy offspring. God wants to pour some new life into you. Remember, the water has to flow. You can't just sit there. It has to flow. Because right in the midst of all this good stuff, this this, this prophecy begins to come place, come, come forth. And, and right in, in the middle of it all, it says, but, in verse 11, but the marshes and the swamps will not be purified. They will still be salty. The marshes and the swamps aren't going aren't to make it. Why? Because 
water gets stagnant there. It doesn't flow. Water can't cleanse these areas because it just can't flow through these areas. Many believe this passage is about revival. Revival coming to the church. Revival coming and, and ministering to us. And, and it's interesting that we're, we're engaging upon the anniversary of, of Brownsville and, and that tremendous thing that took place back there. But the thing that lasts out of Brownsville is this. Whether you agreed with it or not, I, that's not my concern. What I do know is this. I've watched people come forth in the last few days and said, I got saved at Brownsville. God changed my life around at Brownsville. And in the midst of that revival that took place, God began to change me. And that's the key part of revival. And if this whole passage here is to bring life and to bring revival, revival is not just about uh, feeling good about something. It's deeper than that much deeper than that. Revival is not just for you, but for touching other people. It's for ministering to other people. Because it, it, we go on in there in verse 12, it says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on along both sides of the river. And the leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And they will always be fruit on their branches. And there will be a new crop each month. For they are watched by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. That healing flow just keeps on coming. And, and some of those things that maybe you've gone through in your past that you just can't let go, God wants to heal those things. But he wants to even do it greater than that because this water doesn't just affect the edges, it affects the whole thing. Because there's new fruit that begins to come out and new things that begin to come out. Water that brings refreshing and it brings this refreshing all the way through. I read earlier Jeremiah 31, 25. Let me read it again. For I will satisfy the weary soul. Every languishing soul I will replenish. All those people that all those things in your life that you're struggling with, God wants to replenish it. Key time of refreshing is this. This is what gives my opinion. The revival is not just about me. It's not just about you. But it's a bigger picture than that. And that is over in Acts, the third chapter, verses 19 through 21. It says, Repent, therefore, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So I get saved, and times of refreshing come. It's, it's about salvation there. Times of refreshing come because of, of what God begins to change the person. Change the people. See, when, 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 when you begin to uh, be affected by this, this, this river that's flowing out of there, it doesn't just affect you, it affects other people. It affects other things around you. When the fishermen begin to gather the crop, they begin to give it to the people. And other people are then nourished. The trees are not just there so they look pretty, but they're there to nourish other people and give to other people. And this whole picture as it begins to, to just come out of the threshold and begins to flow all the way out, it, it, it comes so that we can have fresh and new life. The other scripture verse I shared as I sent out that encouraging Thursday was found in John, the seventh chapter, verses 37 and 38. Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Why does it got to flow from within them? Where's it going to go to? Into other people. It's always going to affect somebody else. What amazes me is that God will always give you more than just a drink. That dog just needed a drink. But that master also needed somebody to care about his dog. And as it began to flow in that direction, he was happy, he was satisfied, he went out, and that dog was happy, that dog made the master happy. It just keeps on going. And the giving part doesn't stop there. Today, I, I, I need more of what God wants to pour inside of me, and I need more of that river flowing through me. How do I do that? I give out to others. That's how more begins to flow. I, I can't limit what God does, and I can't limit what God holds back. Today, I want and need more of what God has to offer in my life. 
So I say, let the rivers of living water flow into my life. Let it flow, Lord. Let it flow to all who hear these words today. Let it flow to every person. I flipped over to Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 6, and also Revelation 22nd chapter, verses 1 and 2. It says this, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. Whoever comes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And Revelation 22 says this, the river of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street and on the other side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit each month. Doesn't that sound so much like the other part we found in Ezekiel there? The leaves of this tree were for the healing of the nations. Revival comes so that the nations will be healed. I get changed, and then I go and begin to affect other people. I affected that dog owner the other day. You said, well, that's kind of dumb. You're using that as an illustration. No. It was a simple thing. And I prayed afterwards. I said, Lord, just that, that simple task of, of opening up to that guy. Even though he didn't want any more, even that simple task of saying, help yourself. Anytime you come through, please use our water. I've shared water with, with other people coming through the parking lot before. And shared other things as people came through. I just want to reach out to other people and share with other people's lives. I want this water to flow out of me and change people's lives. My friend, you may be sitting there and you feel like you've got some things in the past and you've got some wells that all got clogged up and it's a mess and you say, I don't even know what to do with this past. God wants to clean them out and God wants to open your life up and God wants to change your life and he wants to clean out that salty water and he wants to move through some things in your life and bring the healing power that he can only bring. He wants to take away that fear and that anxiety. He wants to take away those other things that you're struggling with so much inside. And he can do that as you re relinquish those things to God and say, God, here am I. Take me now, Lord. Take me now. Take all those things from me. And as he does, then you share that into somebody else's life. You know, there's a theme going around today that's been going on for several years now. It's called pay it forward. Well, guess what? Jesus paid it forward a long time ago. He paid it forward for you and me as he gave his life so that we would not have to die. And then he turns around to us and says, why don't you share that with somebody else? The key of revival is not keeping it all for me, but it's paying it forward and sharing it with others. The healing of the nations, the reaching around the world, the reaching to my neighbor over here or my neighbor over there or caring about somebody else down the street here. That's what it's about. And I need to be able to do that in my life. And I need to be able to share that way in God and say, God, you come in and you change me. God, if there's some areas that need to be cleansed out, let your, let your waters flow through me. Cleanse me all the way through. Take it out. Lord, God, I don't want to be uh, the, the marsh. I don't want to be that, that area where, where your water can't flow into. Because I need you to flow into my life in a new and special way. Would you just ask God right now, Say, Lord, come into my heart of life. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I want to serve you, God. I need you more than anything else in my life. God, I've heard so much about you, and, and maybe I've heard things, and maybe I've just tuned in for the first time, but I, I just want you in my life. God, your word says that if I ask forgiveness of my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins. So, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins today. I understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and gave his life. He paid it forward for me. And as he paid it forward for me, he did so because he loved me so much. And I want that new life to flow through me and change my entire being. That's what I desire. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My friend, maybe 
you also are, are reaching out to somebody else and maybe you haven't figured out quite how to reach somebody else. Ask God to help you direct, direct your path on that. Show you the way. Show you how to reach to other people. Show you how to share that love that, that changes lives. A well that maybe you haven't dug into for a long time and said, I just need to dig into that well and let that new life come out. So this, this whole group, or Lord, I need your river to flow through me and change these areas so that I can also help other people find that new life. Do that today, my friend. Share that love with somebody else. God bless you today.